Hey everyone, Ryan here, Eminem Productions, and today a ton of new LEGO Star Wars sets and promos got revealed that should be releasing on May 1st. I still plan to make a May the 4th Be With You buyer's guide and promo guide that'll tell you everything you need to know about how May 4th works for this year in about a week or so, so keep your eye out for that. But this video will just be taking a look at a bunch of new set pictures, and I'm pretty excited to do that. We'll start out with the smallest that got revealed today. It's not a May 4th promo, it's just the set you'll be able to buy. It's the TIE Interceptor Set 306 850. 25th anniversary logo on the bag almost said box there looks very nice for a mini tie interceptor I feel like the bag art could have been a little bit more exciting showcasing the battle over Endor with like the Death Star in the background and stuff But that's besides the point It looks like a very very nice poly bag build definitely one of the better ones that we've seen in recent years and For five dollars. I think it'll be a no-brainer pickup Also, this continues the trend the trend was for like the last four or five years that the poly bag that would come out in January of each year Would match a larger set releasing either in January January or later in the year as the UCS set as we saw last year with like the UCS X-Wing That's something that seemingly went away this year as they released the AAT back in January And while there seemingly unfortunately is no AAT to match that later in the year There is a TIE Interceptor UCS set that we'll be looking at later in this video for $10 here We have the phase 2 commander Cody brickheads You can see 147 pieces on the box and this guy looks fantastic They did a great job with him in brickheads form all of the prints look really good and accurate for a brickhead scale model and he also does have the hologram in his hand. I do wish they included the actual minifigure hologram piece. I, I'm not sure if other brickheads include that scale of accessory from time to time, but I know like, you know, the Jedi would get their lightsaber. So I kind of wish Cody would have gotten the actual hologram. It's just the way I look at it. But uh, yeah, would have been nice, but still the brickheads overall is fantastic and does a great job showing off a ton of detail and, and shockingly a really good helmet. Like it's something that's hard to get to translate right. There's been hits, there's been misses, Captain Phasma, but this one I think is gonna be a hit. The other brickhead set here is a six in one pack from the Phantom Menace. It's $55 and we have Jar Jar, looks awesome. We have Anakin and he actually has his helmet on, which is really cool. I thought they would just do a standard Anakin, but I actually really like this version of Anakin and think it translates really well. We also have Queen Amidala, which is definitely probably a star of the show. We have Captain Panaka, which they did a great job on too. Qui-Gon Jinn, and finally Darth Maul. And Darth Maul, someone pointed out to me, has pupils. The minifigure didn't get pupils and looks terrible, but the actual brickheads looks great with pupils. Yeah, really a big fan of this brickhead set. This might be the best overall LEGO Star Wars brickhead. Ah, Commander Cody's pretty good. There's been some other good ones. Is this the best brickhead set ever for LEGO Star Wars? I think it might be. This across the board is great, and it's such a cool concept to see all these characters come together as one, and it just kind of hit me that they're totally going to do a Revenge of the Sith one next year, right? Holy crap, what if they did like the Palpatine's Arrest version of this next year, where you have all six Oh my goodness, that would be insane. Next, we have the main May 4th promo for this year in the 40686 Trade Federation Troop Carrier, 262 pieces and eight total figures. So many figs are back on the table for May 4th after a one year drought. I mean, yeah, battle droids aren't technically mini figs, but it's pretty cool to at least have some figures in this set. We have six regular battle droids and two pilot battle droids. And the pilot battle droids, as far as I can tell, are brand new because that torso print is completely different than what we have seen before. Although I would wager that these won't remain exclusive to this set and that whenever Lego needs a pilot battle droid in the future for whatever set needs one, they're going to go and use this exact same design. So, you know, probably not an exclusive figure long term, which is kind of a bummer to me. I love getting those May 4th exclusive figures, but man, the concept for the set is just so cool that I don't even care. Like if you're going to do sets like this for May 4th, I'm about it. Like this thing looks amazing. It is pretty much a recreation of the 2001 droid carrier, which I recently reviewed on the channel. Check that out. I mean, this is, was an amazing set for the time but this is even crazier it looks so cool it does have two droids in the front which i thought was weird if you're going to recreate this why include the extra pilot battle droid like you could have saved eight cents instead of including that like i don't know it's just one of those weird things like you're trying to recreate a thing but then you're including more what that's crazy lego star wars doesn't do that apparently they do uh, i like the box art for this one too i think it looks really sleek with the uh, grass of naboo unfortunately you don't get any peaks at like an mtt or anything back there oh yeah one last thing the way the battle droid rack comes off the troop carrier is the same style that it was in 2001, which is a pretty cool recreation because they could have done it in different ways since it's an updated model. 
but they kept it the same with the same rail design, which I think is really sick. Next up, we have the UCS TIE Interceptor. This one's gonna be $240. And I think the wings on this are just about perfect. I think the cockpit is where you're gonna see some different opinions come in because this is a different style cockpit than we've seen on any of the previous UCS TIE models. It, it definitely is just a more rounded, different shape. It's as accurate as they could get it in this style. I almost feel like I like the smaller TIE Interceptor more though, but this one does look good. I, I don't know if I would just say the windshield looks too small on the front of it. Let me look up a reference photo. Yeah, not really. Maybe it's just some of those small gaps throwing me off there, but let's take a look at some of the lifestyle photos because last year, big controversy when they tried to false advertise or they did false advertise and Photoshop the dimple on the display card off. This year, they didn't do it. Wow, they actually advertise exactly what you're getting. That's crazy, what a thought. So that's nice, but, oh, okay, good, 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 oh boy. I thought the TIE fighter pilot didn't have arm printing, and I was like, why would you not give him arm printing? But it's like it just really hard to see, depending on the angle and the lighting, but he does have arm printing, so the TIE fighter pilot is great. Unfortunately, no like second cool figure. I theorized back in like August that this could include something like Moff Gideon, and it turns out Moff Gideon's gonna be coming in a different set in June, so it's not like you needed to have him here, but they could have had him here. He definitely would have fit in this set. I don't know what else you would have put in there, so that's kind of why I went to Moff Gideon. He would have been like the coolest character you could probably get in a TIE Interceptor. So uh, the TIE Fighter pilot was kind of the bare minimum. It's essentially what they did with the TIE Fighter in 2015, but this year they did add a mouse droid. They also went and added a 25th anniversary brick, making the front of that card area a little bit busy. But yeah, overall the UCS TIE Interceptor looking really sharp and it's gonna go really nice with that UCS X-Wing from last year if you have one and you wanted to collect both. Finally, the other day I tweeted out a picture that I found in my Droidica instruction manual of a preview for a Lego Star Wars The Force of Creativity book that's supposed to release in July, and they fully revealed it today along with the actual price. My guess of $80? That wasn't really even in the ballpark. This one's gonna cost $150. It's supposed to be, I think, 312 pages, so there's going to be a lot there. It's a very high quality book. It's got a very nice casing. Some people are just gonna go, holy crap, $150 for a book. The reason I thought it would be at least $80 to begin with, though, is Apple had a design book like five years ago, and it was like $300, and people were losing their mind over that. So I was like, I know this one's gonna be expensive, but man, $150 is expensive. To me, that's cool. I get it, $150 is a lot for a book, but if it's $150, I know it's gonna have some really dope stuff for me as a fan, and that's what I've been looking for out of a book like this. You can see they actually show prototype models in the book, and if this book has even 40 pages of prototype models, I'm gonna lose my mind. It's gonna be so cool to be able to flip through this thing. It says it does have like interviews with like designers and insiders, I guess, so I'm curious to see what that entails, but in and of itself, if it at least has a bunch of pictures like this with cool behind the scenes stuff, it's gonna be really dope. You can even see the 501st ATRT and Super Battle Droid buildable figures that were canceled in the background. They also say it includes a time capsule and that's where this Zam Wessel thing comes from. The Zam Wessel figure is canceled from 2020. So they were gonna release Zam Wessel in 2020. I assume in a Bounty Hunter Pursuit type of set, it's that or Dexter Jetster's Diner, right? And the way that that probably would have panned out is it would have been a summer set. There were a bunch of canceled set numbers for the summer of 2020. And I remember at the time thinking, holy crap, there's just a bunch of sets that they didn't release. And so 75382, 75387, 75389, I think, were all canceled. So I suppose if we're really lucky, we'll see the full concept for what that set would have been in the book. Or maybe if we're even luckier, they'll just go ahead and release it like next year or something. I don't know why they wouldn't have released that in 2022, though, with the anniversary of Attack of the Clones. Like so many missed opportunities in the past years, right, fellas? So yeah, this book seemingly is gonna be super dope though. I can't wait to read it. I'm gonna cover to cover. It's gonna be insane. I almost feel like I should do a recording of it like I did with the Visual Dictionary recently. But at the same time, if I do a recording of a 300 page book commentary, it already took me like 40 minutes to read through the other book. So, and that was just kind of flipping through fast. So this is probably talking about like a four or five hour commentary on a book. I might do it. I feel like I'm the only person that would do it. I'm gonna do it. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about all these new set pictures down in the comment section below and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my May 4th buyer's guide. I'll have all the information on how to get the promos, what the thresholds are, what dates you can get them and everything. 